Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel, guys. You've got Bert and Lanny over here, your favorite dividend investing channel here on YouTube because we're trying to reach the millions and millions of dividend investors out there, guys. Welcome back. We're showing what we purchased this past week of June 5th, baby. Where Are we going to cross over $2,000 combined? We did last time. Are we going to do it once again here in today's video? Let's find out together as a community. But first, subscribe to our channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Check out that swag, that mother effing swag, those Diplomats coffee mugs. The store below has them. Lanny, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Are oh, boy. Is it oh. shout out Sunday, guys? Let's go. If we get to... 400 likes again, guys. Subscribe and comment below. Enter into the DD swag giveaway. Hoodies, sweatshirts, um, t shirts, coffee mugs, you name it. Baby onesies, maybe. Let us know. You know, we'll pick a lucky winner and we'll send some swag your way. Again, like, subscribe, and comment on what you purchased this past week. All right, before we get into the purchases, let's do a very fast recap of what the heck is going on in the market. Lanny and I were texting throughout the week. I saw one of the wildest headlines this week that said the U.S. is in a bull market once again. And technically, they're not wrong. The S&P 500 is on fire in 2022. This week, they were up 0.32%, so nothing major, but it's up over 12%, um, pushing on 4,300. And over the last year, it's up 10%. So it's interesting. It doesn't feel like it. I We tweeted about it earlier in the week. It just doesn't feel like we're in a bull market because of all the negative sentiment in certain sectors. But the market seems to continue shrugging that off. Yeah, they say, hey, hold my beer. We're going to keep turning green. Obviously, everybody's on board with a skipping of a rate hike. Um, you know, the reports are coming out strong right now uh, to be in the favor. I don't know. Bottom line is, is the market's pricing in a pause. Maybe they plateaued either which way. The stock market finished off positive for the week in the S&P 500, almost finishing at 4,300. Absolutely wild. But whether the market's green, red, orange, yellow, purple, blue, whatever color you want to call the market, we're buying dividend stocks. We're always looking for those undervalued dividend stock because in good times and bad, we want to continue having our passive income stream grow so we can reach financial freedom. And that's exactly what we did this week. We're both going to share with you in the rest of this video, our stock purchases. And again, are we going to cross $2,000 combined? That is the debate, guys. So let's get right in. Let's kick this off, guys. DD style, Lanny's Vanguard trifecta. You betcha. I'll get it first, Burke, because it's pretty standard. It's pretty boring, but it works, baby. Vanguard's high dividend yield ETF, BYM. My wife and I have been buying it every single week. We're approaching the three-year mark come July 2020. I crossed, we crossed 1,000 plus shares, guys, of Vanguard's high dividend yield ETF. That snowball is rolling. I also not just did 300 in my own account, but I actually added in an extra 150 plus an extra $7.11. So we invested $457.11 in my account, 4.39256 shares. We bought the standard two shares for my wife and her account at $104.15 a piece. We added about $21 in four dividend income at a yield of about 3.18%. Then guys, let's stand and slide over to VIG, VIG, the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation ETF. Because we appreciate this ETF over here, guys. Kept it consistent, kept it standard. $40 a day, so $200 was dropped into VIG every single you know, for the whole week, 1.2744 shares at about 1.89% yield, $3.78 added. But then the Vanguard 500, the S&P, VOO, $60 a day, $300 for the week at a 0.7626 shares, um, added $4.54 at a yield of 1.51%. Then you can tell all the prices are a little bit higher right now. So Again, this is called you can't time the market. You just keep buying when it's up or down. It rolls right off the tongue. In total, with the Vanguard trifecta, you betcha, you put in $1,165 into Vanguard, which added in total between the four funds, $29.46 of dividend income alone. Beautiful. We love it. It is fun watching those positions freaking grow. That's what it's all about. 
But you're, you, I wasn't the only one buying an ETF on Monday. Nope. We started buying for my wife, um, two shares of SCHD, the other darling of the dividend ETF community. So there's VYM, there's SCHD. We're adding SCHD for my wife. We are doing it after the last rebalance, which, and we're enjoying the results so far. I'm not going to lie. Her, we moved, we sold an old ITOT ETF. We loaded up her SDH position to start. So it's now over well over 60 shares. So we kind of have a head start in the building of the SCHD on its journey to at least 100 shares. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say it's all organic getting to that point. We got a nice little, uh, nice little drop in there. Nice little um, Hogan leg kick. Those two shares we had at 71.14 on Monday. So we put in 142.28. The yield is around 3.7% at the time of the purchase. So the income we're tag we're pegging it at $5.28 total from the SCHC edition. So it's growing. The position's growing and we're in the mid 60s right now. That is solid. Now, Bert, you know, you've been buying SCHD every week. You're going to get to 100, no doubt about that within your wife's account. But we had a recap of video that you did. You know, you're trying to get to 100 shares in two different stocks right now. One was Target, TGT. I know, big headliner stock right now. But there's another chicken stock, not chicken that you're chicken to buy the stock, but the stock produces a lot of chicken. So what else did you stay consistent in doing? Tyson, take her simple TSN. We were at the time of that video, uh, we were at about 87 and a half shares. So we're going to continue slowly building our position to get to Tyson. We added three shares on Monday the 5th at 51.58, at it, putting in about $154 and adding $5.76 of income. The yield on that purchase is 3.72%. And look, I just want to get Tyson to 100 shares. I want to cross that mark. We were buy buying it and building the position when it was around 60. Got crushed by earnings. It's in the low 50s. So we're just going to continue using this time to lower our cost basis and hit that big three figure milestone. If we want to write options on it one day, we can. If not, I'm pumped up that we can at least get it to 100 shares and we have a nice, meaty position. Gosh, damn right, Jabroni. Now, guys, let's slide the ball over to my court, guys, because I'm also trying to get to 100 shares in a certain transportation stock, United Parcel Services. Ticker symbol is UPS, the Brig Brown truck. I did do a video on trying to get to 100 there. Mm. Um, a little bit, you know, tough of a journey, but, you know, slow and steady will win this race, guys. Um, I did buy a whole one share of UPS at $166.99 on Tuesday. I was happy to get it below the 167 mark. Um, that added $6.48 to my forward income at a yield of 3.88%. And just to share how many shares I currently now have of UPS as I pull up my spreadsheet, bear with me, I'm up to, well, 83.373 shares. Wow. Yeah, you aren't that far off there from, from 100, 17 to go. I mean, obviously, it's a higher dollar amount, but it's the beauty of it. Slowly but surely, you'll get to 100 shares of UPS by at least adding one every every week, every other week, however what the frequency is. It'll get there, and each dollar added is going to keep growing your income. I mean, that that six dollars and forty eight cents of income alone is a nice addition there for UPS. Um, and Bird, do you yeah. want me to keep rolling, and or how would you like to do this? Uh, I think maybe you should recap. You think you should cap it at the end with because you did a couple of different things. If that makes yeah, sense. sure. Yeah, why don't we do that? All right, then quickly, guys. You know, um, in my account, I did grab one share of Target TGT under 130, 129.94. I know they're under 127 now, so I may have to just pick up one share of the Dividend King. Yes, there's a lot of news going on around the stock, around the company itself. But guys, I'll say this: I was in the parking lot doing a pickup order for my toddler, and um, parking lot's packed. Drive-up spaces were taken. Um, yeah. So I Use your eyes. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, visit the stores. Um, but hey, maybe that's just my area. Maybe your area is different. So, you know, bought one share, one twenty nine ninety four, added four dollars thirty two cents at a yield of three point three two percent. And then similar to Burt, we grabbed two shares of Tyson TSN in my wife's account at fifty dollars and forty nine cents on average at a three dollars and eighty four cents at a yield of three point eight zero percent on Tuesday and Friday were those two stock purchases. And you know, I'm going to love those. You know, I'm loving those, especially based on that. And then especially teasing my next move, because I also made a move for Target, but it was slightly yeah. different than Lanny's. Yeah, you got to break this one down for yes. the community here, right. because I think they'll get some appreciation for what you did. And then, you know, just from a psychological and tracking standpoint. Yep. So here's what we did. 
I also talked about how I want to get to 100 shares of Target. We were sitting at 95 at the time of the video. I wanted to get there, and I want to get there soon, especially for Target while the stock is down. But it's still a decent amount of money to put in. It's still a little under 500, especially with the dividend that's coming up. The other piece of this is before I get into the Target purchase, I've been talking to everybody about how I want to clean up my portfolio. I want to stop monitoring stocks. I have a lot of small positions that I started building. And for whatever reason, I just stopped. So I have some positions that are like $500, $300, $200. And ones that I'm not interested in building into a larger position. So my question is, what on earth am I going to do with them? So in this transaction, in at its core, I sold a small position, put the funds into Target to help me get closer to 100 in a position I'm interested in building into a milestone. So what was that position? Smuckers ticker symbol SJM, we have a huge position in my wife's portfolio. So that position's fully baked in her portfolio. In mine, I just had 2.15 shares, which was about $320. The stock has been on a tear recently. I set a limit order if I wanted to sell it somewhere over $150 per share. The limit order canceled at the end of the day. I logged back in in the morning and the stock was over 150. It was at 151. I had a pretty decent gain on this. I had over 40% on the amount I invested. So I took the gains, cashed it out and moved the funds into Target. So I sold 2.15 shares at 151.34, took the $325.38 and put the funds into Target, adding in the few extra dollars I had sitting there in my brokerage account. Selling Smuckers, I did give up $8.77 of forward dividend income. They are yielding 2.7%. But as Lanny said, Target's yielding higher. So I'm also picking up some dividend income with this move. Two. With Target, I bought 2.54 shares at 130.02. I caught them at the beginning of Friday, unfortunately not at the end when they were trading at 127, 128. So I missed out a little bit on the extra drop, which I'll pick up probably next week. The move, but I increased my target position by 2.54 shares, which I said, putting in $330. I threw in five extra that was sitting there, adding $10.97 of dividend income. So in total, I picked up $2.20 of dividend income, grew the income on those dollars by 25%, which is freaking awesome. And now I'm on the doorstep of $100, I mean, 100 shares of my target position. Knocking on, knocking on targets, though. Yeah, so I, I know that was a lot there. In summary, sold smuckers, moved the funds into target, and picked up some dividend income along the way. Yeah, you got more yield. You know, you got you're realigning your portfolio, getting out of a position that's small that's just hanging there. You still own the stock just in your wife's account. I, I you know, I dig it, man. You're simplifying your your spreadsheet. Yeah, it makes my life a lot easier, and I no longer have to stare at the smuckers and just say, "What on earth am I doing with this?" So, Guys, so in summary, let's let's calculate out what what we did here. You know, I dropped fifteen hundred sixty three dollars thirty two cents over BYM. BOO, BIG, UPS, TGT, and Tyson. We added $44.10 in forward income at a yield of 2.82%. Or what did what was your net amount here? So my week, not the largest on paper, but we did make some structural moves. We added in just over $300 of new cash after the Target and Smuckers exchange. We had bought SEHD, Tyson, and then Target, obviously net Smuckers. In total, adding 301.86, forward income $13.24. So a yield of 4.39% on this overall cash infused into the portfolio with the Smuckers pickup. Yeah, this, the, the dividend swap there, they got you a lot more yield. So, guys, in total, the dip low mats got $1,865 invested into the market, over $57 in forward income was added in total. So what did you guys do this past week, brother? What stocks did you buy? Again, don't forget to let us know in the comments, like the video, and subscribe to be entered into the Dividend Diplomats giveaway if we hit 400 likes on this video. That's right. And Lanny, I think there's one thing left we have to tell the viewers, isn't there? What's that? What is that, Bert? I think it's something about um, riding or dying with the Diplomats, or is it if you're not with us, you're against us, everybody. That was Bert and Lanny from the DD over and out.